Hello, and welcome to the Sunday Meditation at the Light Institute of Galisteo and the Sanctuary of Light. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, we divide our meditation into three parts, and we begin by quickening our energies to connect with our higher selves. Your higher self is the intuitive essence of your soul, your own inner voice. And so we ask the higher self to take form, we take it into our body, and then we sit in meditation. I'll push, the, you know, I'll make a hmm sound so you can push the button on your apparatus so that you can meditate for as long as you like. The second part of the meditation, we practice what we call the art of radiance by drawing down a beautiful beam of pure white light down to the top of your head, down into your solar plexus, and lasering that out across the planet and back into the sky. And in this part of the meditation, we simply draw the white light in as we breathe in, down into the solar plexus, which is the center of the emotional body. And then we exhale and laser that white light out across the planet and back up into the cosmos. And we simply just follow our breath. That will take you into a lovely state of meditation. In the third part, uh, each week, uh, we pick uh, a situation or something that's happening that allows us to take this lovely energy that we gain in our meditative state and radiate it out into the world. This week, we're going to send out through sending color out to all humanity and out into the world uh, so that we can access and amplify a sense of courage. Everyone needs courage at this incredible time of change. And by having courage, we'll know that we can participate in that change and therefore fulfill our destiny. And so, let us begin. We'll begin with several breaths. Close your eyes. Breathe in through your nose. Hold at the top for a moment, and exhale slowly through your mouth. And once again, breathe in through your nose. Hold, and exhale slowly. Ask your higher self, your own inner voice, your own wisdom, to take a form for you. It doesn't matter what form comes. It could be a sunrise, a star, a being, a tree, a light, an animal, or an equation. Ask your higher self to take form for you at this moment. Ask your higher self to touch the place in your body where you are holding your divine essence at this moment. And just imagine that your higher self is touching any place in your body. Now focus on that place and breathe in and out so that you create a, an opening there for this divine source and draw your higher self in through that point into your body and sit in meditation. Om. Reach up into the cosmos with your consciousness and pull down a beautiful beam of pure white light down to the top of your head, down into your stomach, your solar plexus. And from there, laser that white light out. Imagine it illuminating our planet. Cross the planet and back up into the sky. Breathe in, pull the white light down. Exhale. Laser the white light out across the planet into the sky. And just continue following your breath. Oh. And now, bring all of the eight billion and more human souls into 
into your mind's eye. Just imagine all of them there in front of you. And ask humanity what color, what frequency of light it needs to feel each and all and a sense of courage flowing through the body and building up that sense of strength and purpose. Now ask humanity what color it needs to feel and to access that power of purpose at this moment. See what color they ask for from you. Reach up into the cosmos again and pull exactly that color down to the top of your head, down into your stomach, your solar plexus, and laser that color, exact color, out to all humanity and feel as if humanity is having asked for it, is receiving it in and receiving the color that gives them courage, that it shifts them, makes them feel strong and purposeful and just continue to send that color activating courage for all of humanity at this time. Breathe deeply and open your eyes. Thank you. We have a second part of this Sunday meditation. It's called Knowings. And every week from around the world, people send in questions that they would like for us to focus upon in order to uplift us all, illuminate us all, and all of those that are participating. And Alison will tell us the questions that have come for this week. Alison? The first question is from Guadalajara, Mexico. Guadalajara. Mexico. Uh-huh. Whenever I have a moment of breaking free into something new, I get hit with something that takes me down hard. Why is survival mode so addictive? Hmm. Well, you have it right there, that uh, we've been trained to focus our minds, which tell us what is real, uh, and magnetize to us whatever we're holding in our minds. So you might have a breakthrough, and then that emotional mind of yours says, you can't have that. No, it's not gonna, it's not gonna last, you can't have it. And that, that thought form is what brings on that manifestation of the opposite of that breakthrough that you've had. And so you, you need to begin to, to see that whenever something negative happens, when you've had a breakthrough, or you feel like you've gone forward, or gone upward, or quickened, that when that comes with what we call at the Light Institute, the paper tiger. That's your emotional body trying to drag you back because when you're afraid, when you are exasperated, when you feel helpless, it creates a biochemical stimulus in your body. And that's the addiction. It's a physiological thing. If you are angry or, or afraid, it stimulates that energy and then your, your emotional body actually feeds on it. So it's looking for that. And it also um, feeds into those unconscious energies that, that so many of us have, that we're unworthy, that the goodness will never come to us, that we don't deserve it. Yuck, yuck, yuck. And so you want to, for example, every night when you go to bed, clear that out. Where am I holding any residue of unconscious feeling that I am unworthy or that bad things are going to happen. Go to that part of your body, ask it what color it needs to be released. Or, uh, to the opposite of that, when you go to sleep or when you wake up in the morning, ask your body where it's hold, holding that power of going forward, that everything is going to be fine, that everything is going to open up for, for you as a new beginning. And then ask your body where it holds that energy. Prick it open and let it flow through and nourish the mind of all of your cells. So you can stop the, the survival habit there. And uh, that survival energy, again, is just the bad things are going to happen, so now I can't focus on uh, what I really want to focus on. I have to battle. And that's the survival. But the battle 
is, again, an imprint that you have, that that's all you get. So shift those things and go forward, because you can. It's all in, up to you. Great love. Alison? The second question is from Berlin. What causes cruelty to mm. people, animals, the planet, and how can we as a species lift above this trait? Hmm. Hmm. Well, first of all, I would say that people who are cruel, whether they are cruel to animals or, or in the environment or to each other, they have never uh, found a way to live uh, that makes them feel that they belong. And so what happens in cruelty is that the imprint and the experiences have been, something has hurt me, so I will hurt something back. I will get back at that. And perhaps you can't get back at the parent or, or, or something that's bigger than you, so you choose something that you can hurt. And it's a way of uh, saying, well, I was hurt, so I will hurt you. So one of the ways to heal that is to gather up in your mind's eye all of humanity, as we were doing a few minutes ago, all of humanity who has, who has experienced cruelty, and ask them what frequency of light they need to be healed from it. That's one way to do that. Uh, and another way is uh, to uh, replace cruelty with, again, seeding out into humanity uh, a sense that, uh, of caring, that in the same way a child might care for a kitty or a dog or, or a plant, that uh, we have within us this goodness that wants to help, that wants to heal, and that we can help humanity activate that by sort of seeding the awakening of it. So the other side of an exercise in consciousness would be to ask humanity where it's holding that goodness of caring. And then imagine that humanity is saying, oh, it's in the heart of humans, or, or wherever it is. And then imagining that that, that is opening up. It's as if it were uh, being born now within everyone, and that that sense of humanity, of caring, is now beginning to awaken in all of humans. And that allows for us to hold, because it's very important how we hold humanity. If we hold them as violent, negative, cruel beings and we're watching for it as we do see in movies and we do see in the news, if we're focusing and addicted to that, that's all we'll see. Whereas on the other side of that, there are infinite acts of kindness, of healing, of caring that go on and people don't notice it. And one of the ways that, that you can uh, participate is to become aware and choose uh, to be kind and to watch yourself be kind. It doesn't matter if anyone else notices that, but that you notice that. Maybe it's simply allowing some car to go in front of you, or someone at the grocery store to go in front of you, or smiling at someone, or um, do, doing some kind of an act of kindness, of caring. And when you do it, it creates an energy that goes into the ethers that others will suddenly feel that they want to uh, embrace acts of kindness. They don't know where it comes from that it's inside them, and you have psychically stimulated that by what you choose, the way you live your life. And that's what makes a difference, how we live our lives. Great love. Allison? The last question is from Dallas, Texas, USA. Dear Chris, hmm. I have friends who just lost their ranch in the fire and most of their cattle. And some of the cattle didn't die initially, but were horribly burned and had to be put down. Mm. This has shaken me to my very core. There those animals were being bred to slaughter for food and then killed just as horribly in another way. I've never considered cows as living conscious beings until now. Cattle ranching was just what it was, a business. 
But what has happened to all of those cattle across the panhandle has given me a huge wake-up call, and I'm asking you from deep in my soul to please give an exercise of consciousness in your knowings for all of the animals humanity has harmed through our lack of conscious connection to nature. Chris, please help heal my broken heart. Mm. Mm. Yes, I have read about this, uh, and the pictures of it are horrific. Uh, and, and it bodes the question of how we treat animals, especially animals that we're planning to, to eat. And it's really a time that we want to consider uh, whether this is the best way of our human interaction with nature to occur, if there is another way that we could manage that. Certainly it would be to uh, not slaughter animals so that they have fear um, uh, or that they suffer. And nature has given us a very vivid uh, view of what that's like. And so uh, what I would say is that uh, we need to find inside ourselves <clears throat> a kind of energy that does recognize that all life, all animals, uh, do have consciousness. We, we may notice that in our, in our pets, that they're aware of our emotions, uh, and that if they're aware of us, it's, it behooves us to search uh, our capacities, our psychic intuitive capacities, to look for that part of them that is conscious, because they are. Uh, I think we can see in, in Instagram and on the internet uh, again and again uh, animals that should be enemies and how they embrace each other and take care of each other. And so all of nature is whispering to us, make a change and see what is true that everything has consciousness, everything has emotion and caring, and we humans need to amplify that inside ourselves. And so I would say now two things, that in an exercise in consciousness, first we could awaken within us the capacity, the intuition to um, care about witnessing this. I do know that people that, that raise cows or for milk and things like that, um, have relationships with them. But when you have you know, a herd of cows, it's much easier to not connect with them in a way that, that sees them uh, as, as conscious beings that, are, that you can relate to and take care of. And so the first part then would be to activate that kind of capacity inside ourselves. And then the second part of this exercise, I feel, would be to help humans to extend an energy of caring to animals. And also, uh, for those of us who can feel this terrible thing that has happened in Texas, to um, send out an energy of pardon, let's say, of, of, uh, of that we are so sorry that this has happened. The fire was not our fault. No, but um, that we couldn't save them, that we couldn't be ready for it, that we couldn't k somehow um, live a life that would prevent that kind of suffering. Let's do it now. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath into your body. And imagine again this eight billion, all of these humans, and, and see where your higher self focuses you. My higher self right now is focusing me and all people that raise cattle because it is, we are using their deaths uh, as a point of reference to teach ourselves to become illuminated and aware that they, they feel. And so, uh, whomever comes into your mind eye, humans. Ask humans what gift they need from you to awaken that intuitive connection to nature so that if we are 
working with animals to, for food, whether it's a chicken or a cow or whatever it is, that we can see their life force. We can acknowledge and honor them, especially those that are going to give their lives uh, because we feel that we need their bodies for our, for our sustaining energy, which I don't feel we do. So bring them into your mind's eye and ask all of humanity, again, what energy they need from you to awaken that intuition, that awareness. Let's use a color, because color is the language of the cosmos. And just see what color they ask for from you, so that they can be seated with a new consciousness, with a new awareness, so that these things stop happening. That we protect all life. Whatever color comes to you. Again, reach up into the cosmos, draw down that color, and extend it out to all of humanity. And through that light, that frequency of light, that color, feel as if that color is opening the consciousness, the intuition, the caring, the awareness in all of humans to connect to animals and all of life in a more conscious way. And just continue to send that light out to humanity until you perceive a shift. Maybe there's an uplifting and opening of the heart. And as you see that awakening occur, then simply imagine that that awakening is beginning to flow out in a stream of energy from humans. I'm sending mine to all of the cattle who have lost their lives and all of those who are still alive and to all, through them, I'm sending this energy of condolence. I'm sending this energy of uh, saying that I stand for us to change so that we recognize them. And as it moves through these cattle, I'm hoping that it is now going to uh, fill them with a consciousness, an awareness of our uh, wishing to change. And then to send that out to all of life. That humans are capable of acknowledging and honoring all that lives. Certainly all of those whose lives we take for our survival. That perhaps we can do this differently or we can stop doing it and find that we can more than survive in higher ways that nourish our bodies better as we nourish the bodies of all living lives. So feel as if, as you send that to humanity, that it opens an energy in humanity and out from humanity flows this energy of connection and consciousness that it comes to console and heal the situation in Texas and around the world where animals are losing their lives for our gain. We can rebalance this now. So feel this flow going. And again, as I send that flow out, I am really sending it out to all of those ranchers who are also suffering, that they become aware and perhaps can choose a better way to use their ranch, to use the their lives, so that no one is to blame, but all of us come together, all life force, all the cattle, all the ranchers, all the earth can come together and to come from this fire up to a higher octave, a, a new way to live our lives.
and take a deep breath and open your eyes. May your heart be healed in knowing that this terrible event may create changes in how we choose, how we, how we take care of life, how we protect life and our nourishment. So there is purpose in everything. So let your heart mend. Great love.